So I'm wondering now that it's getting darker every day and a little colder, particularly today, anybody feeling a little resistance to that? <laughs> yeah. So it's funny how we resist the change of seasons. We look forward to them and then we, we have those little bits of resistance, right? <clears throat> I grew up in the Midwest and mostly Chicago. And every year, I, I lived in the city and commuted by L train, and L in Chicago is not subway underground, it's elevated tracks, which, you know, for wintertime isn't a great plan for Chicago in terms of the passengers waiting outside <laughs> on the elevated, you know, right in the wind tunnel. And so I, would, I just could never get warm enough. You know, I'd wear like two overcoats and boots, and I never got to the ski mask, you know, the full ski mask. <laughs> I, mean, I was going to work, and so I didn't really want to like, you know, do my hair and then put the ski mask on, but <laughs> probably should have, because it would feel literally like my, the places where my skin was exposed, like I was pretty sure, I sometimes would even look in the mirror when I got to work, that I had cuts, you know, that there was, must have been some kind of laceration that happened, because it would feel that raw, you know, the wind and the cold. And so every February, I would curse the city, I'm not staying in this city one more, you know, season, I can't do another winter, and then, of course, you know, spring would blossom, Summer was always so much fun, and I'd long forgotten February until it came around again. <laughs> About the time I finally embraced the Midwestern winters and just, you know, really embraced the full season of winter and got into it and started to, to really actually enjoy the cold is about the time I moved to California. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny how that happens though, isn't it? Because it seems that once we let down our guard a bit, once we begin to embrace and accept and stop resisting and pushing back so much, is when a new pathway is made, right? And that is the way of peace. I mean, Gandhi and Martin Luther King and so many before us, Jesus, Buddha, so on, showed us different ways of making peace, of creating peace. And it's really not so much a, a creation as it is a letting go. <laughs> you know, it's much more of a dropping the guard kind of experience than anything else, a stop to the resistance. This is the second week of Advent. Last week we talked about faith and kind of grounding our, our walk in this preparatory time toward Christmas. And, and so faith is, you know, boosting and, and, and affirming and, and creating that foundation. And now we're in that week of peace, that time that is aligning us with the season. So it's all the more important for us to now embrace and not resist the darkness and the coming darkness. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about that and, and the, the coldness and everything that is a part of this season. Mary is a character that we talked about last week a little bit, and, and really, if, if Christmas belongs to Jesus and the idea of the Christ within us breaking through, which it does, that's what Christmas is all about, then this preparatory time, this Advent season, it really belongs to Mary. This is, this is that time of gestation, it's that time of, of preparation, and so that's, that's what's happening for us. It's like we're pregnant with possibility. You know, we're pregnant with, a, with something new that will be reborn through us, and we say, well, again? Yes, again, every year. In fact, every moment, every moment, every breath, a new opportunity to recreate or to be something else. And this week is that, that part of that that is really not about doing, but just ah, <laughs> letting go, embracing, allowing what is, what is present for us right here. So Mary does this really beautifully, you know, an angel appears, she's told she's gonna have this very special child, and, and she says, you know, what all of us would say with this great kind of news, she says, oh, I am a servant, you know, a servant of God, let it be according to your word, you know? Don't we always receive great news like oh, yeah. this? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Mary actually came by it honestly. Um, we don't know a lot about her background, but we do know she was raised in a temple and her mother was the priestess Anna. You know, so she does, she probably lived a life that was very much attuned to prayer and meditation and, and being very open to this energy of yin that she so beautifully embraces that this week of peace is so much about. 
It's an energy of receptivity. At one of the symbols for it would be like a chalice, you know, just an open receptacle of receiving. And so that's really what the, the, this aspect of peace during the Christmas story offers us and asks of us is to, you know, drop the resistance, drop the defenses, drop the doingness and the busyness, and allow ourselves to just be in the natural rhythm of this season. So there might be something up in your life, I don't know, maybe you're not aware of it or not aware of it, places maybe where you're resisting, maybe even places within your body where you're feeling tension or pain or discomfort. And so I just invite you to close your eyes for a moment and just allow, if there is anything present for you now in your life that's just kind of getting under your skin or maybe something where you feel like you're just, you're pushing against a little bit. You want it to be different than it is. And just allow that to come forth for you. And if it's something physical, you just allow your attention to go to that part of your body where there might be tension or discomfort. And now I just invite you to bring the breath to this situation or to this place in the body. And notice how just as you breathe and, and, and send breath, so if it's some situation, if you might bring breath to the mind or the heart, wherever you're holding it, emotionally or physically, emotionally, physically, or mentally. So wherever you're holding that little bit of resistance, just bring the breath to that area. And notice how as you breathe and expand that space, the thing breaks up, whatever it is. <laughs> the thing we're pushing against, or the feeling in the body. That's really all there is to this walk of peace. It's to allow ourselves to bring the very breath of spirit, puts us in that mode of yin. <laughs> of working with that which we would otherwise be putting energy out against, resisting. You know the old saying that whatever we resist persists. So if you're still working with that, I just invite you to just take one last breath and just kind of see that situation, that tension dissolving and falling away. And notice how Maybe your body, your mind, your heart, your whole being feels a little bit more peaceful. Touching that stillness only takes a breath. This time of year can be such a busy time of year for us. So many of you have your regular lives and then you add on top of your regular lives perhaps entertaining and cooking and shopping and wrapping presents and baking and putting up lights and you know a lot of other things that you're adding to an already busy schedule and yet we're in the midst of the season of yin <laughs> the season where the moon rolls between now and the solstice the moon rolls the northern hemisphere this time of year the season of yin is actually a natural rhythm that happens there's more darkness more cold more of an of a impetus for inward and inwardness. It's a season to really be sipping tea and taking baths and rests and, and longer times in the stillness. And so when we're dealing with a lot of outer activity, then we need to find ways that we can bring that kind of stillness into everyday life. And you can do it as simply as you just did in one minute or less. You know, just a breath. So wherever you find yourself, that breath brings you back to the, the truth of the moment, the presence of this moment. That mindful breath brings you into this yin energy. It makes us more receptive when we are in the present moment. If we're busy thinking about what's next, then we'll miss the moment of now, right? The gift of spirit the receptivity and the acceptance of what, it, what is available to us right now. So there's a, I've talked a, a little bit about yin, and it's, you can't really talk about yin 
without yin yang because they go together, right? <laughs> They're meant to go together. So there's a, you've probably seen this symbol before, the, the yin yang symbol. And the yin yang symbol, typically yin, the, the feminine, the, the, this dark, it's, it's the shadowy energy, the, the darker times, this, these shorter days, the season right now, that's usually the darker part of the symbol. And then you can see there's yang and yin, and there's yin and yang, right? <laughs> there's a dot of each, and, and, it's, and it's also circular. So the whole symbol is about wholeness. Every one of us has dark and light. Every one of us is ruled by moon and sun. Every one of us is both feminine and masculine. So all these pairs of seeming duality are meant to be as an integrated whole. And this season is a reminder of the one that we tend to be most out of balance with in our culture, which is yin, right? Yin is a gift of the East. Yang is the gift of the West. <laughs> The gift of the West is doing, is action, is sunshine, is it's, it's that kind of movement, masculine energy, right? The gift of yin comes to us at Christmas time, right? Where do the Magi come from? From the East, no mistake. It's a gift of yin, it's a gift of receptivity, it's a gift of spirit. And so we open ourselves to that gift and we align ourselves then completely with the earth rhythm the natural rhythms of the season that say to us out, outside, and we can continue to ignore it because we have artificial lighting and we have you know, thermostats and we have uh, fireplaces get us a little bit closer to the earth, right? Because we have that element of fire. And so it can remind us of the balance, but we have to stay present if we, if we are using those ways of controlling temperature, right, and experience. And if instead we then pay attention to what's going on outside, ah, it's getting darker sooner. And don't many of you want to kind of curl up with a good book by the fire and sip tea this time of year when it gets colder and darker sooner? I know I do. And now, oh, I got so many things to do though, you know? So a lot of us are kind of in that, trying to find that balance, trying to find that. And so if we can succumb to the energy of yin, allow ourselves wherever we can to match up with that, then we match up with everything, earthly energy and heavenly energy all at once. Well, then we're completely in sync. And you can tell that when you give that gift to your body, you can tell that your body sort of ah, rests in that energy, right? And it makes us then more open to receive guidance, more open to insight, because we are participating in something that is happening all around us and within us and from the earth as well as, as the call of the season, from the, the spiritual understanding of what Christmas is about. This yin-yang um, idea has really deep roots, as you may know, coming, coming out of Taoism. And it actually, some trace it back to about 1400 BC during the Yin Dynasty. And during the Yin Dynasty, this, this idea came up of, of the yin yang, the balance. And it became the basis for the Chinese Book of Changes, I Ching, you may have heard of before. It also was key teachings that were used in the Yellow Emperor's classic medicine book. And so today even, traditional Chinese medicine and feng shui draw from that book written over 2,000 years ago in Chinese medicine. So it has an ancient, really ancient kind of gift that comes to us from the East. And it, it you know, came 2,000 years ago, right? Toward the West, anyway, to the Middle East, and, and, and then beyond as our culture moved. And, and yet, we can forget so easily because our culture has been so much more focused on the Yang side. But they're meant to be an integrative whole. They rely on each other. They have to have one another just like we have to have aspects of being that are both physical and spiritual, light and dark, masculine and feminine, and all the other kinds of dualistic ideals that we can come up with. It's all meant to be a part of our walk of, of the holistic experience, and this is a part of the, the leg of the journey at Christmas, this peace walk. So, what happens, you know, when a baby gets born too soon? You know, when a baby comes prematurely, right? There's all kinds of risks and concerns, right? For the mother, for the baby. That the baby has not fully gestated, is not fully developed, 
has not waited until it's the right time. And the same is true with us, you know, when we, when we use too much yang energy, we push things through too soon. And when we're in yin, we allow the natural timing to work. We surrender to God's time. And it's hard for some of us because, you know, we're kind of taught to be sort of in control and know what's next. And, you know, it's, it's lauded when we're confident and we're clear. And you know how it is in, in our culture when you, well, maybe you know, I don't know if you've experienced where, you know, you may be in between things in life and you tell people, yeah, I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do. Do you ever notice how uncomfortable everybody gets? <laughs> how they all wanna tell you what to do next? <laughs> and it's like, no, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, to say I don't know in our culture sometimes is a huge thing, right? Mm -hmm. I remember doing a retreat a few years ago and uh, Brenly and I had a friend that had a really hard time with not being in control of things. And one of the exercises was to get in pairs and just chant, I don't know, I don't know, I, and just witness. <laughs> so we had a whole day long retreat and afterwards she said, yeah, about six months later she said, I still remember that exercise you made me do. And I said the I don't know one, she said, yeah, <laughs> that one. <laughs> so being in that place of uncertainty, that being in the in-between, being in the transition space, all of that is supported by yin because it's allowing, it's accepting, it's saying this is the way it is right now. I don't have an answer in this moment. Spirit has not yet spoken through me and to me to know what my next step is. And that can be a real teaching for the rest of our society if we can stay strong in that place like the young Mary was able to. You know, imagine how controversial that was for she and Joseph at that time. And she could have resisted. She could have said, no way do I want to experience this. I'm going to go into hiding. I'm going to leave the country. I mean, this is too embarrassing, right? In fact, Joseph was going to quietly dismiss her so they could both protect their honor as much as possible. You know, and then he got a dream that said, no way. You're not quietly dismissing her. This is part of a bigger plan. And so, you know, that, that and so he listened, right? So that's another way that we receive yin is through dream time. This is also a really rich time for your dreams between now and particularly now in the solstice. We're also surrounded by important moon uh, energy right now. You know, last Sunday was a full moon supermoon. January 1st is a full moon supermoon. January 31st is a full moon supermoon blue moon. <laughs> so there's a lot of that kind of thing at play. I don't know all the inner workings of that. Some of you may know, um, but I just know that that, that that the energy is up <laughs> and, it, and it's a time for us set in this Christmas season, set in this natural rhythm to really embrace it and allow it and move with the natural rhythm that is available to us. You know, it's a bit like a lot of times it seems to me that we are as human beings often afraid to get still because maybe there is grief that we know that's there. Or maybe there's some old memories that we're afraid we're going to bump up against. Or maybe there's some feelings that we just don't want to feel. And so we just stay busy and busy and busy, right? But that only works so long, right? <laughs> but instead, what if we just looked and allowed and rested and did what the angels say to every character when they appear in the story, be not afraid, fear not. And so if we were to just open and say, maybe it's not so scary after all. Maybe I'll look at the tail of the dragon. It's a little sideways peek, you know. <laughs> oh, hmm, that's kind of interesting. And so we then get a little bit more engaged in, in looking. It's not so scary anymore. So as our resistance drops little by little, the gifts come bigger and bigger. That's how we enter the season, really, with you know, an openness like this, you know? It, yes, we say it's the season of giving, but I guess I really want us to get, it's also very much, particularly at this time, the season of receiving spirit, the truth, the wisdom, whatever it is that wants to come through us. How else will we rebirth a Christ consciousness? You know, again and again, every year, you know, we rebirth at a new level We've evolved a whole year long 
you know, all the lessons you've learned in a year, all the things, all the ahas, all the insights, all the experiences and conversations and projects that you've been a part of in a full year, all the loss, all the gain, in a lifetime, you know, in anybody's lifetime, in a little window, in a day, in a moment, so much happens. When we slow down, when we enter this season and really embrace the rhythm of what's being asked of us, we see some of that, we touch some of that magic. You know, it's like in winter when the leaves are all off the trees and the tree just stands there naked. It's especially brilliant when it has a backdrop of snow, you know. But you know the beauty of those naked trees? There's a kind of haunting beauty to that, isn't there? Especially a naked tree in the moonlight and snow. And what happens then when all those trees lose their leaves, what happens is we get a much deeper perspective into the forest, don't we? When there is a a letting go like that, we get a much deeper perspective into ourselves and into our lives. But it won't happen if we don't allow what, what is being called forth in this season of preparation. It doesn't happen if we don't move ourselves into a place that says, Huh, I'm just going to let go for a little while. I'm going to drop my defenses for a little while. I'm going to just be with spirit or the person before me or the activity in front of me and bring that mindfulness to each moment, that presence. So when we notice, maybe this could be our homework throughout the week, when we notice that our body's getting a little tense, we can, oh, okay, <laughs> drop the shoulder, soften the belly. You know? Or when we notice maybe our defenses are getting up, Somebody said something and we're getting a little upset. We can, oh, okay, you know, just call upon that non-resistance. And just one breath, we can drop ourselves back into infinite peace, infinite presence of spirit. It's that easy, really. I know we always want to make it a whole lot harder. So it's like, you know, how can we complicate that more? I know I do that. (laughs) I'm guessing you do too, right? It can't be that easy. It's not possible. So really, pause becomes our friend, you know, during this time. It's that pause that allows us to, to just look again, again, and to receive from, from this, this place of this Eastern gift of yin. The opportunity then for us is a bigger opportunity, not only for our own lives and ourselves individually, but for, for the world as a whole, right? One peaceful person makes a more peaceful planet. <laughs> And so every one of us who moves further into this place of peace brings forth more peace on earth. It doesn't take a whole lot of efforting to just let go little by little and breathe a little more and allow a little more. And that's what I think allows us to birth a greater level of peace. In fact, that's what I shared with you during the meditation from Zachariah who you know, was a little bit more resistant at the beginning when he found out that he and Elizabeth were going to have a child in their old age. But then during that silent time where he was struck silent (laughs) through her pregnancy, he came forth then with this beautiful prophecy after John was born. And part of it was the steps to peace, you know, embracing the darkness and the shadows because it is the steps to peace. So a lot of us know, we're very aware of, steeped in perhaps, the, chaos, the seeming chaos of our world, the seeming chaotic things that happen every day in the media and so on that we hear about, the, 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 and the natural disasters that, that are occurring pretty frequently. Yet that seems to be a part of just where we are in order to do the rebirth, right? It's kind of come to this, right? This is where we're at so that things can break apart, just like that simple meditation you did where you brought breath to an area where there's tension and it, and it breaks it up. So we're in that breaking up phase. You know? So when things are broken up, it looks crazy and chaotic. But hang on. <laughs> it's not the end of the story. You know? This is just part of the journey. And so, yeah, it might look crazy and chaotic, but, but don't get too attached to that because that's not where it's staying. 
And so, so we as, as individuals on this spiritual journey, if we stay the course and say, oh yeah, okay, right. So what I am doing now is bringing forth this, this open energy of yin. What I'm doing now is bringing in breath. What I'm doing is bringing mindfulness and presence to this conversation in this place where I'm going or this moment or this cashier I'm interacting with or this place where I'm driving along the road. I'm just, I'm just breathing. It's just one breath. It's just one breath. And that one breath breaks up all the road rage. That one breath breath brings a gift of peace and kindness to that person that's been working hard behind that register, you know? That one, it's just, it's, it's that kind of peace. That's what we bring. It's, that's energy. That's, that's the yin-yang working together. But it's allowing ourselves to start with spirit. Allowing ourselves to start with the open, the receptive, the accepting, the lack of resistance. With every breath, it's a letting go. It's an opening. You know? It's just like the body. We notice it when, when the shoulders drop and the arms open. It's like, oh, isn't that a wonderful way to greet someone, you know? Arms open, a big smile on your face. But if we're all, you know, scrunched up and thinking about the next thing to do, you know, it's a very different kind of stance in the world. And the world doesn't need more of this. <laughs> Our society doesn't need more of this. Our society needs more of this. That's the call of this week's piece. So there are many ways we can do it, and there are, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's just paying attention to the rhythms of the world and, and nature and allowing spirit to bring us the gifts and the signs. There's one sign that's been hanging around our office here at Unity during the week, and um, I think we have a picture of it. And um, this little guy, Aww. yeah, <laughs> Felicia's clapping because she and I have both been visited by the praying mantis. And you know, the praying mantis in um, Native American medicine, the medicine it brings is the power of stillness. And it does look like it's praying, you know, you've probably interacted with a praying mantis before. They're usually by themselves, and they've got those large, open, sort of innocent eyes, you know, and then that little kind of prayer pose. They're supposed to be excellent hunters because they just blend with their environment and they wait for their prey to come to them. Brilliant yin energy. So, so this one, you know, so when medicine comes your way, when you, when an animal comes into your path, it's it's medicine for you. It's a gift for you. So pay attention. What's what's out there for you? Who will come your way? Somebody told me this morning the hummingbird has been coming around them. So, you know, different things that you'll you begin to notice as we slow down and invite the receptivity. I was walking on the, um, the Iron Horse Trail the other day with my dog and the, there were golden leaves and I just, I don't know how it happened just so the light, but this praying mantis was exactly the same color as the leaves. And um, it was like a movie, you know, I'm, I'm bending down talking to the praying mantis, realizing she's in the middle of the path. And I look up and, and there's barreling down toward me as this like three wheeled stroller, this woman with a baby in it, and this man next to her with a big black lab, you know, and they're all coming toward us. You know? and I, oh no, the praying mantis. You know? <laughs> so I, I was like able to sort of edge it over off the, the path just in time. And, um, you know, but that's the gift of the praying mantis. It just sort of, it sort of waits for its good, you know? So it's like, doesn't even know I'm in danger. Oh, along comes, you know, along comes spirit <laughs> of some form ushering me into safety, you know? And so, and then the gift, of course, that comes for us in that interaction. So paying attention, whether it's to animals or plants or people, it, it's, it takes presence, right? It takes just that, that dropping in, that allowing, that receptivity. David, um, McNear is a retired unity minister that lives up in Napa, and he told this story about the fires. And he said that his, the fire was coming, the night, the night of the fires through Napa in his area, were coming right toward his house, and he and his wife were away for a couple of nights. And so they hear about this, and there's nothing they can do. Their beloved cat, one of those really cool special breeds of cats, was in the house. And so he's just lying awake, and he's just praying, and he's visualizing, and he kept visualizing. He's like, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I just keep see that fire, that straight line of fire toward my house just going right around my house. You know, and he just kept seeing that visual. And so the next day, they go back to the house, and I guess the way it was set up was you can, the police will let you through, but you can't come back out. <laughs> 
So they had to make a big decision, go check out their house, and then kind of be stuck there without power and so on. Uh, but they decided to go, and so he gets there, and, um, and the house is okay. <laughs> It's perfect, you know, things are burnt all around and his house is fine and his cat is fine. And cat has been through many lives because previously his landscaper had insisted upon bringing his new puppy over much to his, you know, resistance. No, no, don't bring your puppy. And the puppy had chased the cat away years ago and the cat had been gone for a few days and it had been just a tragedy for the family and his wife and, and so on. So he noticed though that there was this, this really carefully dug trench around his house to keep to let the fire go around, and so he thought, wow, the fire department really took a lot of care and time, you know? And then he gets a phone call, and it's his landscaper. And his landscaper says, you know, I saved your house last night. And so, you know, he also redeemed himself because he <laughs> saved the cat. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's the way it works, right? So, so David went into receptivity mode, you know? He engaged, and now he might have felt like he didn't have a whole lot of choice. Sometimes we feel like we're kind of up against the wall and okay, well, it's time to surrender and pray, right? It's come to this, some people say, you know? But, but the visualization that he did, you know, that, that allowing himself to drop in and say, okay, I'm working with spirit on this. This is what's happening, you know? And that's exactly how it manifested for him. So some of that receptivity allows us then to co-create in this kind of quiet way that is a part of putting our good out to spirit. So I want to just close with this uh, quote that seems poignant by Michael Maciel. You know, the virgin birth, the idea of, of the virgin is just being whole unto oneself. That's, the, that's the, the meaning behind that. That's the understanding. So it's about wholeness. He says, the experience of the virgin birth is an ever attendant realization wanting to, only for the pH of the soul to shift into receptive mode. So in order for this to happen, it's just that pH, that balance, right, of the soul to shift into receptive mode. And as soon as we drop the reasons why it can't happen and open instead to the possibility and acknowledging that it actually is happening, then it will happen. In fact, it can't not happen, he says. <clears throat> he said, the star of Bethlehem will appear in our inner night sky, and the gifts of the east will be showered upon us, and the world will be transformed. It really is as simple as that. Dropping our resistance, breathing, connecting with spirit. That's all there is to it. So let's do that together this week. And let's speak that attention together in this affirmation. Together, I drop all resistance and receive deep peace. And so it is.